Alleluia. Christ is risen. We are gathered together today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Together, let us confess our sin. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You. you may be seated. This is the O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be made whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the fourth chapter of Acts. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, 
By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked, how is this man, how has this man been healed? Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from the third chapter of 1 John. We know love by this, 
that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Holy Spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. And for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John in the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. Who really knows a shepherd these days? That was a question my colleagues would always ask me whenever we were doing uh, our mutual Bible study for the preaching text when I lived in Youngstown. Who really knows a shepherd these days? However, while they meant that as no one, I actually did know a shepherd because my congregation had Cynthia. Cynthia owned a thousand head of sheep and periodically would invite me out to either bless the new lambs or meet the sheep or get a feel for what actual sheep were really like. Good Shepherd Sunday is always the Sunday I remember with Cynthia because Cynthia would always come up to me after the church was done and she'd look at me, and she was a little shorter than me, so she'd look up and go, you know, they're not as nice as the Bible makes them out to be. Remember, I looked at her and said, Cynthia, are you saying Jesus is insulting us when he calls us sheep? No comment. (laughs) Keep that question in the back of your mind. Is Jesus insulting us when he calls us sheep? We'll come back to it. If you get nothing else from this sermon, please get this. Jesus came to save sheep. He did not come to give you the power to turn yourselves into superheroes. 
You do not have to be more than sheep. Jesus came to save sheep. That's what he's saying in this gospel lesson. There is just no way around it. Martin Luther said that when you read this story in the Bible, you should hear Jesus saying that my kingdom is only to rule the sheep. That is, the poor and needy people who see and realize that there is no other help or counsel for them. Jesus puts it this way. He says, the hired hand runs away. The hired hand will leave. But the good news is that no matter the threat, no matter the danger, that Jesus promises that he will not leave us. Even in the face of threats, Jesus promises he will not leave us. Or look at Psalm 23, yet another story about sheep. But the point is, even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, the psalmist can say that God is with us. And the psalmist can even more say that God provides a table in the presence of all our enemies, that in the very presence of every threat you can ever imagine in your life, Jesus will not leave us. This gospel lesson is not a gospel lesson for perfect people. This is good news for broken and for hurting people. It is good news for sheep. This is not a gospel for perfect people. It is a gospel for those of you whose house is a mess. Because who's had company over anyway during quarantine, right? This is a gospel that is good news for those of you who are chronically late and just can't manage to be on time. And it is good news for those of you who are chronically behind on every task. This is not a gospel for normal people, whatever normal means. This is a gospel for those of you whose minds work differently. And it's a gospel for those of you who struggle with depression. And it's a gospel for those of you who are behind on your bills. And it's a gospel for those of you whose anxiety just seems out of control. And it is a gospel for those of you who feel exhausted. Luther's right, and that's not the last time you'll hear me say that from this pulpit. Jesus' kingdom is for poor and for needy people. The problem is, is that often we think we have to be more than sheep to qualify for God's grace. We kind of think in our own minds, oh, God can't possibly accept needy people like me. And we think to ourselves that God can't possibly accept broken people like me. That God can't possibly accept a weird person like me. And so we try very hard to be anything other than poor and needy. We must look perfect or act perfect. Or we must come to God somehow with the right mindset or the right actions. Media team, now show that picture. One of my great flaws, brothers and sisters, is that I am on Twitter. And that means I check Twitter in the morning. And Professor Dustin Benge posted this this morning. And he said, these are the six, qu- six questions you should come to worship you should think about to prepare for worship. This is how you should prepare to come into the presence of your God. Is my heart severed from the world? Is my mind free from distraction? Is my soul hungry for scripture? Is my life humbled before God? Is my sin properly confessed? Is my joy fixed upon Christ? Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you the answer for me is nope. Number two, is my mind free from distractions? That alone disqualifies me. Not to mention all the other ones. 
My heart is not perfectly severed from the world. And my soul is often hungry for anything other than Scripture. And I am often far from humble, and no sin in my life is perfectly confessed. And my joy is often fixed on anything other than Jesus. And that is exactly the point. Jesus does not say, fulfill these six checklist items and then come to worship. With all due respect to Professor Benj, he is wrong. All Jesus says is, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. So the question is, what's left for sheep to do? After all, I was at Cynthia's pasture an awful lot, and I can tell you, sheep don't do much. What is left for us sheep to do? There really is only one thing in the end. We weak and needy people, what we need to do is welcome and support and strengthen other weak and needy people. Let's be honest for a moment. We are so very good at doing anything other than supporting weak and needy people. I don't know why that is. Perhaps it's that their weakness and their neediness threatens us in some way. Or perhaps their weakness and their neediness, perhaps it just reveals a little too much in ourselves for us to be comfortable But either way, we often hurt and cast out those very people who are in need. But it is our job to do the opposite of that. In the letter to 1 John, our second reading, John puts it this way. Verse 17. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet refuses help. Little children, let us love, not in word or in speech, but in truth and action. It is not enough, says Scripture, for weak and needy sheep just to say that they love. It is not enough for weak and needy sheep just to say that they believe in this whole Jesus business, that they must act in truth. That it is our job as weak and needy people to help others in their weakness and in all of their need, and that includes their very real physical needs, their hunger for justice, their need for aid. So, back to our question. Is Jesus insulting us when he calls us sheep? If I may, I have a rather long quote from Martin Luther. Sheep, you know, says Martin Luther, are the most foolish and stupid animals. After all, when we want to call someone stupid, we say, he is a sheep. Nevertheless, it has one trait above all other animals, that it soon learns to heed the voice of its shepherd and will follow no one but its shepherd. And though it cannot help and keep itself and it cannot heal itself, nor can it guard itself against all threats, but is dependent upon others, yet it always knows enough to keep close to its shepherd. Maybe it is an insult. But to be a sheep means that we have a good shepherd. And that is very good news indeed. Amen. with gladness see what today is done now after gloom and sad
safe from evil, and sin I laugh to scorn, for Christ again is free in glorious victory. He who is strong to save has triumphed o'er the grave. This is a sight that gladdens what peace it does impart. Now nothing ever saddens the joy God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate with the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scripture he ascended into heaven he seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Lord, the giver of life, He's from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving Shepherd, you know your own, and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen our church throughout the world, that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God. 
Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O God. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O God. Abiding Shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may lay down our lives for those in need. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O God. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection, hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promises to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this, the end of all ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Said now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we and all who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
This isn't on your slide, but I think you know this one. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. See, you do know it. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.